Welcome back to What the Fact. I'm Katie and this is Aaron. And now it's time for our weekly look at the key Senate and House races uh, around the country as we kind of get closer, inch closer, to the November 6th midterm elections. This week we're going to uh, West Virginia, a state that we've been fact-checking now uh, for a little over a year, year and a half. We have a partnership with West Virginia University to kind of keep those politicians there honest. This is a very interesting state because in some ways it's such a red state right now. Uh, Donald Trump won uh, uh, election, won the electoral votes in West Virginia by 42 percentage points. Um, it's also interesting because the seat in the Senate is currently held by a Democrat, Joe Manchin. Uh, and if Democrats want to try to retake the Senate, they kind of have to hold on to his seat and, and a total of 10 uh, seats that are currently held by Democrats in states Trump won. And so a lot of eyes are on this seat. Uh, obviously, a lot of eyes are on Joe Manchin. He voted to confirm uh, Brett Kavanaugh to the Supreme Court, the only Democrat to do so. Uh, he's, he's also taken a lot of flack uh, from Republicans. The Republican there uh, is the Attorney General uh, Patrick Morrissey, has had several visits from Donald Trump to try to kind of rally the base to try to turn that state red. Um, we'll see what, what what happens here. I think the polling generally shows Manchin with a lead, generally well-liked. Morrissey has tried to portray uh, uh, Manchin as kind of a, a Democrat in, 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 in the form of Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi. Joe Manchin basically says, I'm a West Virginia, I make decisions for West Virginia. It's created some interesting dynamics, including some cases where Manchin has said some things that sound a lot more like a Republican than a Democrat. That's, uh, yeah. <laughs> on one of those issues, it's been uh, very interesting to watch his position on immigration. Uh, Joe Manchin hasn't always been fond of Donald Trump's ideas for controlling immigration, including the border wall, including a number of other policies. Um, so Republicans have been accusing him of being soft on immigration. However, they've really been overlooking some interesting votes Manchin has taken that have been a lot friendlier to Trump than you might expect. And Joe Manchin kind of capitalized on that in an ad recently where he said, I voted to fund President Trump's wall. Check the vote. So we did. Here's what we found. There's another important congressional race happening over one of West Virginia's Senate seats. Incumbent Democrat Joe Manchin is trying to defend his seat in a red state. That means he's trying to toe the line between backing the president where he can and, well, being a Democrat. Manchin is trying to do that by drawing attention to his support for the president's proposed wall along the border with Mexico. Hey, I wanted Mexico to pay for the wall, but they're not. So we need to do it ourselves. Senator Joe Manchin said, let's get past it, I'm in. We do need a wall. We're going to do what it takes to secure our country. I voted to fund President Trump's wall. Check the vote. Okay. The bill Manchin showed in his ad is a bill that, among other things, would have funded the president's border wall. Ultimately, that bill lacked the support it needed to become law. So yeah, he voted to fund the wall. But it's also important to keep in mind that since President Trump took office, Manchin has offered various takes on the wall, including in a July 2017 interview when he said, quote, I'm not for building a wall. I'm not for building a wall at all. All right, Aaron, we checked the vote. What does the statement get? Uh, the statement rate's mostly true. So Joe Manchin has uh, done a number of things that have generally supported construction of the border wall. He's voted for Republican proposals that would have advanced uh, border wall funding. He also did vote for uh, $1.3 billion uh, in, in funding that essentially, uh, we would say, didn't fund the border wall, but uh, it replaced some fencing along the wall. So long story short, Joe Manchin here has a point. Um, he's taken some some votes that kind of put him at odds with a lot of the what you might consider mainstream Senate Democrats these days uh, in supporting the border wall. So but uh, on the other side, uh, you have uh, Patrick Morrissey trying to make the argument uh, that uh, Joe Manchin isn't uh, as good for West Virginia as you may think, right? He's essentially pushing an argument that uh, Joe Manchin is much closer to Hillary Clinton than the people of West Virginia. Yes, yeah, so you noticed, or you, you had said earlier that he was being portrayed as being kind of in the pocket of Pelosi and Schumer, and now we have Hillary Clinton um, as part of the Democratic machine. Uh, Morrissey, in a recent tweet, gave us not one, not two, but like three or four yeah. <laughs> <laughs> different areas. Um, gave us a lot of homework. <laughs> yeah, he, he gave us fact checkers a lot of different things to track down, but we did. Um, where Joe Manchin is more closely aligned to the Clinton wing than he lets on. So we're just going to take you through each part. Here's what the tweet said. 
Um, he said, on life, guns, tax cuts, and coal, I, Patrick Morrissey, stand with President Donald Trump in West Virginia. Meanwhile, lying liberal Joe Manchin stands with Clinton and D.C. Dems on gun control, higher taxes, amnesty, and Planned Parenthood. The choice could not be more clear. Yeah. Okay, let's start with guns, where yeah. uh, Joe Manchin, he used to actually have a pretty favorable rating with the NRA, but that's not the case anymore. Yeah, I mean, if you look back... 2004, when he was running for governor, he got an A-plus rating from the NRA. 2010 and 2012, when he was running for a U.S. Senate seat, he was endorsed by the NRA and received an A rating. Uh, but things soured in 2013. Joe Manchin uh, supported and proposed legislation along with uh, Pat Toomey, a Republican of Pennsylvania. This is in the wake of the Newtown shooting in Connecticut uh, that essentially would have tightened background checks and restrictions on gun ownership. And so at that point, the NRA started to turn against Manchin, giving him a D. Uh, and it was actually airing ads, and it is airing ads, on behalf of Morrissey uh, in West Virginia right now and uh, essentially opposing uh, Joe Manchin there. So on guns, the statement pretty much checks out nowadays. Nowadays. All right, so he also said he supports higher taxes. Yep. This is referring to Manchin's vote against the Republican tax bill that became law when Donald Trump signed it in December 2017. It's a little misleading because a vote against that bill didn't mean you support higher taxes. Right. It really meant that you supported keeping our tax situation at the status quo. Um, so it's a little bit of an exaggeration to say that he he supported higher taxes um, when really it was it was a vote against many components that were in the bill. Let's go to immigration policy. Uh, on immigration, Joe Manchin supported the Gang of Eight legislation in 2013. Again, this is a bipartisan effort by Democrats and Republicans to try to uh, give people a path toward citizenship. Certainly this was opposed by a lot of conservatives um, and ultimately died and broke down amid, amid kind of the, the talks between Republicans and Democrats. Even Republicans who were in the Gang of Eight, like Marco Rubio said they don't now support the effort uh, that was happening. The, the bill ultimately failed. So again, probably where we're at on a lot of these is there's some truth to it, there's also some uh, more nuance. And so when we kind of put this soup all together, uh, we, we kind of found to be uh, this to be half true, which basically means there's something to what Patrick Morris is saying, but as you often get into the weeds of these details, there's stuff he's leaving out. Exactly. All right, that's going to do it for this week's show. One week closer to Election Day. Hang with us. We'll be back next week. We'll take you to a new state and bring you the latest from the Trump campaign trail and your, what's happening in your newsfeed. Until then, I'm Katie and this is Aaron. Take care. Bye.